What's going on YouTube? This is Her Collects Comics. Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. As always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. I'm doing a video in person today. I did a video not long ago where I was just flipping some books. But this was a special video and I wanted to personally get on camera and congratulate Big East Comics for hitting the Big 500. Um, you know, he's doing a contest entry and so this is a video uh, for that contest. But uh, first and foremost, congratulations, my friend. 500, that's an awesome milestone in the YouTube community. You've got a great channel. I love what you guys are doing with the New York City Warriors. I think that that's great. You and Manny are uh, Manny NYC. Seem like really nice guys. I've had the pleasure of meeting Manny at uh, more than one convention, uh, you know, at some point, you know, when I've seen that last convention was in uh, July. You know, and uh, one or two other cons, but, you know, I haven't caught up with you yet. Hopefully, I'll meet you at some point in the convention in the near future, maybe the New York City Comic Con in October. But I uh, just wanted to show some love to you and your channel. I wish you all the best moving forward. And so you wanted us to show off some of the uh, covers in our collection, comic covers that we really like. And so I'm only just going to show off a few. Some of them uh, are uh, my big favorites. There are others, but I've you know got a nice selection here of some of my favorite books, and I'll just briefly explain why that is. This uh, very first book, most of these are slabs. A lot of the books that I really like, I've uh, I've got readers' copies, of course, but then I've got you know nice um, graded copies as well. Uh, and so, but this one here, I don't have a graded copy. This is uh, probably the very first comic book that comes to mind that I collected when I was a kid. My father was a very, very mild comic book reader. For whatever reason, he liked Thor. And so as a kid, he gave me a stack of Thor comic books, Bronze Age books from the mid-70s, which I still have tucked away. Um, you know, this here, I got... a. a I got a second copy of this because I liked it so much and I wanted one that was a little bit in better condition. It's Thor 259. And again, as a young kid, this cover really stood out to me. You know, you've got a bunch of different things going on in here with Thor, his crew, Volstag, fighting Grey Gargoyle, and a bunch of other people. But you've got a guy here in the crowd... Uh, with a monkey face, a lion face, you see this dude here with an alligator face, a wolf face. And uh, this is a cover by John Buscema, story by Len Wein. See a guy there in the corner with the green hand. There's a warthog uh, with, you know, tusk kind of a character. And so as a young kid, I, I really, really, really liked this book. It stood out to me. Because of all of the different, uh, you know, you know, species, aliens, whatever you want to call them, on the cover, and so um, this is one of the books that really comes to mind as the first comic book that caught my attention when I was a young kid. Um, so that's one of them. The rest will be some slabs. This one here I've showed before, but this is uh, actually the first CGC book I ever acquired. I got a really, really good deal on this. Um, before the movies were announced, uh, you know, the, the new wave of Star Wars movies. And I got a really good, I made the guy off of it, he accepted it, and um, it's a 9.6 copy of Star Wars number one, autographed by Stan Lee. Beautiful signature placement right there over the Star Wars. Rather large signature at that. You know, but uh, in recent years, you know, some books I've seen Stan's signature slightly slipping a bit because of his uh, poor eyesight. This one here is on the money. One of my favorite books, I have also another copy of this issue, uh, you know, a reader's copy. But I've always loved Star Wars. I collect a lot of Star Wars books and memorabilia, if you guys have seen some of my other videos. You know, but this here is, um, you know, this book means a lot to me. I love Star Wars, my first graded book. A uh, good, uh, you know, good um, grade, uh, 9.6. Next is also another uh, Star Wars book, perhaps one of my favorite covers from the original 1977 Star Wars series. It's, uh, Tom Palmer did some fantastic covers for Star Wars, many of which were painted. This one here is particularly not just my favorite Tom Palmer painted cover, but very likely... Uh, with the one I just showed you being the other contender and probably the Bubba Fett first appearance, which I also have and should have in this video. But anyway, uh, this here is uh, 
Star Wars. Now, again, I have a few of these. This one is uh, number 81, and it has an absolutely beautiful painted cover with Han Solo, Boba Fett, the Millennium Falcon, Chewbacca, Jawas, R2-D2, rest in peace Kenny Baker, by the way, who passed away yesterday at the age of 81, was in the all first six initial movies as R2-D2, some of which he did along with his brothers. Not many people know this, but he had two twin brothers who I think rotated in um, the R2-D2 acting. Um, so this here is one of my favorite covers. The light doesn't do it too much justice down here. I got to get a better lighting situation. That's why I did my other video the other day upstairs because I could get better light. But this is one of my all-time favorite covers. Absolutely beautiful painted cover. 9.4 white pages. This next book here is also, again, one of my all-time favorites, man. Todd McFarlane is one of my favorite artists. Uh, this here is an absolutely fantastic cover, in my opinion. Uh, it, he literally takes up the entire page, the Gray Hulk. I love the graffiti block letters at the bottom there that says Incredible and Hulk peering through the H-U-L-K at the top there. Absolutely stunning. Purple cover. This is a tough book to get in 9.8 because of the purple cover. Anytime I see them on eBay so many times, you'll see one or two little nicks that break color and by default drop it to a lower grade. This one here has a scuff corner, which is why it's not a 9.8, but still an absolutely beautiful Copper Age book autographed by Todd McFarlane and Stan Lee. Next book here, again, this is when I think of my favorite comics and my favorite comic covers in particular, this absolutely comes to mind. It's a stunning Todd McFarlane cover, absolutely gorgeous. And it's one of my favorites in my collection. Happy to show it off for Big East Comics 500 subscriptions. Congratulations, my friend. You deserve it. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 316 with Venom. We all know this cover, of course. Todd McFarlane, who is infamous for always doing a beautiful head bust in the bottom corner. Books like this, where you have... Um, you know, one of the little doodles or the Spider-Man head busts. Or I can't take a book like that if it's got, if it's got the barcode. Yes, I have barcode books, direct editions, uh, you know, newsstand editions rather. Uh, you know, but if there is an option for a book that I really like, like this, I will not take. Um, you know, for a high grade, you know, perhaps especially for grading, I'm not getting it uh, with the barcode if I can get it with one of those little head busts or doodles or whatever. <clears throat> so Amazing Spider-Man 316, iconic cover there with Venom. Eddie Brock is back. 9.8 white pages. Winding down here, I, can, I have so many books that I love that have fantastic covers. This here is one of my prized possessions. I've showed it, uh, actually I haven't showed this in a while, but um, there's a story behind this book. I'm not going to get into it. But basically, I had two graded copies of this at one point in time. There's a story behind that. I no longer have one. Um, and essentially, I submitted this book, uh, which I paid for probably 10, 12 years ago. I bought it for 40, 50, 45 bucks in Long Island, where I was living at the time. And it held up real nice. Now, my copy, the one that came back just like this identical, was a 9.6. That was the one that went. And essentially, I got a free upgrade to a 9.8. So I parted ways with my 9.6, um, and I got an upgrade at no cost to me at all whatsoever for the same exact book, same exact signatures for a 9.8. Again, there's a story behind that. Meet me one day in person and ask me at a convention, and I'll tell you if you care that much to know. But I ended up getting a free upgrade on this book, essentially, is the long and short of it at no cost to me. Uh, 9.8 white pages signed by David Michelini, Todd McFarlane, and Stan Lee. 9.8 white pages. And again, the copy that I had that I submitted for, um, you know, to a third party facilitator for a signing, um, you know, that was my copy and I bought it for about 45 bucks. Last but not least, 
a PGX slab. Ooh, PGX. I like this slab. It's strong and it's sturdy and it's clear. I prefer CGC, but I don't have a problem with uh, PGX. Amazing Spider-Man 100. Iconic cover here by John Romita. Absolutely beautiful. 9.2 with white pages to boot. And you have all of those beautiful um, red colors there, bright blue, you know, and on top of the backdrop of the, the different characters in Peter's life, Mary Jane, Aunt May, the Green Goblin, you name it. One of my all-time favorite covers. Just at the cusp of the Silver Age and the Bronze Age, 1971. So that's it, my friends. Thanks for watching my video. Go check out Biggie's Comics. Congrats on 500 subscribers, and I'll catch you down the line.